I know when it all started, like the initial co-op, um, the first signs of it kind of started back in the school year of 89, 90. They decided to co-op for football and for baseball because Oakland didn't have baseball, Kansas didn't have football, Kansas needed somewhere to go because they wanted to play football. So when the fall of 89 happened, Kansas came over and they started playing football. And so they were called the Oakland, Kansas Oaks. And then that following spring, they co-op for uh, baseball and they were called the Kansas Oakland Bulldogs. And at the time, Oakland was orange and black and Kansas was purple and gold. Mainly a lot of this was just because of enrollment. Kansas was starting to lower and so was Oakland and they weren't having as many kids go out for these sports. I remember being a kid and going to football games and it was always Oakland, Kansas Oaks, Oakland, Kansas Oaks, Oakland, Kansas Oaks. And I was very proud of, of the orange and black. Um, didn't really know a whole lot about anything else. My family's a, a huge football family. I just remember going to games with my, with my mom and dad. My brother played and he graduated in 2000, so he was in Oakland Oak. But I remember growing up and being like, oh man, I can't wait till I get in JFL. I'm gonna I'm wear orange and black. Can't wait till I get in high school because I'm, I'm gonna be repping it. So it was spring of 2004. We had a couple people come in class and I think they were administrators or something or they, they were handing out these pieces of paper. And on this paper, it had three things you could vote on. The first one was the team name. Second one was your mascot, and third one was your team color. They did it at Kansas as well, and majority vote ended up being Titans, like obviously. And then when it came to the school colors, they didn't bring in any extra colors. The options were orange, black, purple, gold, and you could only vote for one color. So we ended up changing our, our school colors from orange, black, purple, gold to orange and purple. So it was oh, 2004, 2005 is when we, we co-oped all the way across the board for everything. When it first started out, I wasn't very happy about it because I wanted to be in the Oakland Oaks stuff, gear. I wanted to be all Oakland Oaked up. I wanted to be orange and black. But then once I started experiencing the, the, the Tri-County Titans, the orange and purple, I started bleeding orange and purple. And I think there was a lot of excitement, at least from articles I'd read and people who were in high school and were in junior high at the time, you know, I think they were excited, but at the same time they were nervous because they didn't know because there was a rivalry there b before that for some sports. So 14-15 happened, Shiloh joined the co-op since Oakland was being represented color-wise with orange and Kansas was being represented color-wise by purple, Shiloh needed to be represented as well, so they added blue. There is success between the three schools within this co-op and it's really awesome to see all these like these parents who probably played against each other when they were in school to they're on the same side they're on the same team and they're supporting the same kids they're supporting each other's kids I was a city girl, I married a farm guy, and I became a farm wife. When I was first married, my in-laws had a book called The First Hundred Years um, of Kansas. And I read it and I thought, this town has some amazing history to it. And I've always liked to talk to people, and I've loved photography forever. And the opportunity came up for me to be able to write for the story and contribute pictures, and I thought, this is perfect. The village of Kansas was plotted um, about 1853, and it wasn't too much longer that the first newspaper was established, and it was called the Kansas Citizen. There was also later um, the Kansas News, the Republican Sun, and the Guardian. Um, those papers all lasted maybe four or five years each, and the remaining paper, the Republican Sun, was renamed the Kansas Journal. And it stayed the Kansas Journal until 1981 when the name changed. The older papers were located in what I had always known as the Cook Hardware building on East Point of Vista Street. And then it moved to the second story of the 
drugstore that was on the corner of Buena Vista and 49, which is where the Prospect Bank stands now. Aside from the hundreds of pictures that I took of the sports teams, of the Little League teams, and stories I did on the 4-H clubs, there were several stories that I did that were very memorable. In the early 90s, we had six young men and women from the class of 88, Kansas High School 88, that were sent to the Gulf War um, with their unit, the 1544th. My son was one of the ones that went. Um, we had rallies, um, we had parades, um, and it was a sad time for us that they were gone, but it was a great time to see all of the people who were there to support them. We even had a tree in the park, a big old evergreen tree that was decorated um, with yellow ribbons. And one of the pictures that I took was of his second cousin who was standing in front of the tree when she's just a little girl, Tori. And she was a big supporter of, of him and the troops. And I'm happy to say that they all came home safe. The Rodney Jewell family of Dudley, which was east of Kansas, um, had a small farm that they made into a small wildlife zoo and was open for anybody to come who wanted to come see it. They raised all kinds of birds. They had chickens, they had wood ducks, they had pigeons, peacocks, and pheasants. They also had a license to raise raccoons. Their son raised his own birds and he used them for an FFA project in high school. These are just a few of the stories from the prayer that I was privileged to do and it, it was fun and I enjoyed the history and I enjoyed just having fun doing it. Forty people in 1940 were meeting together to worship and praying that they could have a Baptist church in Ashmore. George Moore was the one who coordinated the meetings and they met in a church or in an old building uptown for a while until they were able to lease the Methodist church and later buy it. And when they bought it, then we find them calling James Ostema for the first pastor. And he only stayed just for a short time. And then there were three more short-term pastors that followed him. And that went on until 1947, at which time they called a college student at Eastern, who was my husband, Dean Rule. And he had started his education to go into the ministry. So he pastored here then until 1950. From there till 55, there were four more short-term pastors. In 55, the church called Dean back again. And when we came back that time, the old church building was in sad need of repair. The pigeons helped us sing the songs sometimes as they looked in at us. And if it happened to be on a rainy Sunday, you might have to move to miss the raindrops. So the church knew they needed to build a lot. And when it was finished, we were able to get better organized. And we had the uh, Sunday school age groups and we got the uh, mission group started for the kids. And it also had the uh, vacation Bible school. We were able to start a choir, and we had uh, a bus ministry, and we had two teams, a visitation team and a prayer team. We met in that new sanctuary then in 1965 for the first time, but by the time that was all completed, we were thinking about the education unit. That was in 1970. One, and we finished it in 1972. It seemed like I was always teaching a class and playing the piano. Uh, I spent more time on the piano bench <laughs> than on a church pew. <laughs> but I enjoyed every bit of it. Well, in 1979, Pastor Rule felt 
and knew that he had completed the God's call that he had had with the Ashmore Church, and it had been great. But God's number is seven, the perfect number. Each of the three units were completed in seven years and paid for in seven years. And the pastors following him, there have been seven pastors who have kept up the work and the present pastor is David Calvin, who has been here for 10 years. And we're thankful that those 40 people prayed and got the church started and that it has kept going. And now it's not only reaching in Ashmore, we've sent people out to other parts of the world. So Walnut Point's just north of Oakland, and the whole thing became a reality in 1961. The legislator passed a bill that appropriated funds. They bought the ground, and the park opened in 1968. It got its name a whole lot longer before that. Uh, the park is named Walnut Point because that is the first settlement in Douglas County, which that original settlement is about three miles west of the park. When the park opened, it was only 464 acres. Today is 671 acres. And we have 60 campsites, a shower house, a little over five miles of trails. There's two boat ramps, um, a concession stand. Just a lot of general amenities uh, for people to enjoy. The focal point of the park is the lake. Um, it's 59 acres and there's a little over seven miles of shoreline, uh, which for that small lake is pretty neat because there's so many fingers. So it's an all electric lake, there's no gas motors, which is enjoyed by a lot of people because it stays quiet, the water stays calm. It's huge with kayakers. Um, it's, that's really become a thing here in, in recent times, so we like to see everybody get out and enjoy them. And we've done a ton of new programs and new habitat work. Um, we're really big on prescription fire. It's, it looks scary and leaves things black, but it's really good for the forest, um, and it's really bad for the invasive species that we're trying to get rid of. And for the last two years, we've had school kids come out on Earth Day, and we've put over 1,500 pollinator and prairie plants in that square, which reduces our mowing and saves money and then gets it back to what it should be looking like. And each step on our Facebook page, and. That's a great way that uh, we get our general information out to the public and they can see what we're doing every single day. You know, we're working hard to use your tax dollars as best as we can and constantly improve and either come up with new stuff or redo the existing stuff that we already have. And it's nice too because just like these little communities, Walnut Point's kind of a little place. So, but when we put that maximum effort into that little place, everybody gets to notice it and see what's going on. And it's just really neat to see multiple generations. You know, now my kids are there and when I was in eighth grade, I wrote a, a, a paper on what I wanted to do and I said I wanted to work at Walnut Point State Park. And then I graduated high school and I joined the service and went off and saw the world and then I worked for the U of I and just randomly ended up at Walnut Point. Now I live there. <laughs> My great-great-grandfather was 16 and he was living with his grandmother at the time and she she passed away so he immediately had to grow up he was 16 and I think he had four or five younger siblings so he had to take care of them and there was really no way for them to do anything so they lived off the land and kind of made do with what they had and there's a family name their names the Zigglers in Marshall and when he passed away he split his inheritance two ways, one with my great-great-grandfather and then his biological children. So he split his inheritance because he felt sorry for them. And with that money, my great-great-grandfather went into business in 1906 in Marshall. And then after that, with the partnership, uh, it kind of fell apart. In 1908, my great-great-grandfather actually moved to Kansas and started the store there. I mean, I think we're the longest lasting business in 
Kansas as of right now. And as things went on, the business became more profitable and he opened up a few more stores. So I think they got up to six at that point in time. They were doing well and obviously everything was horse and buggy back then. So to ship lumber and materials in between stores, I believe it would take them two days to get to Marshall and back. Where now it takes 15 minutes and we can take, we can take thousands of boards 15 minutes one way and it not be a problem. But in the winter they would, uh, they would actually heat up bricks and sit on them to keep them warm on the carriage. So as that went on, my uh, great great grandfather, he had one boy, his name was George. He was an only child, so he was a little spoiled, and my grandpa will tell you that, that he was a little spoiled. Um, his main love was shooting clays and fishing. So when my great-great-grandfather passed away, uh, he had to step in to the business, and his business skills weren't that great. He didn't like to work. So he just kind of hung out and did his own thing. He had to close two of the stores because they weren't making money. So. He kept four of them open, and he ended up passing 10 years after he got the reins. So when he passed away, it was the early 50s, and my grandfather now uh, took over the business, fresh out of high school, I believe he was 20 or 21, so there was a lot of weight on his shoulders with that. He had a meeting with his accountant, and they told him to sell. There was no point in trying to make these businesses work, so he, he closed, uh, he closed two more stores, so they went from six to two after that, and they kept Kansas and Marshall going. And as things progressed and things got more, uh, more efficient, he started reopening more stores. They went to Charleston first, then after that, they went to Mattoon, Casey, and Ogden, I believe were the ones that he opened up himself. So the business obviously grew with that, and after that, my father, became the fourth generation to take control of the company and he did that in 1999 I believe. So he's been at it for 20 years and he's planning on retiring now. So we're getting ready to transfer into the fifth generation but dad opened up, he nearly doubled the company in size in those 20 years as well. He went up to Paxton, Muhammad and then we branched out into different states after that. So we have two in Indiana and two in Kentucky now. It's always been a family business. That's something we pride on. It's still 100% owned by the family. It is pretty cool to go through town and realize that there's a lot of history here that you have a part in building. I mean, honestly, you don't really think about it until someone comes in and they're like, hey, we built our house through you 10 years ago and they know who I am and I have, I have no clue who they are, but they, they kind of picture us as family. Welcome back, everybody. We hope you're enjoying Ashmore, Oakland, Kansas. This is our story here in studio. We're having a party. Uh, oh, we love yes. when those phones ring, and we've got some special shout outs to give. You want to kick us off? We sure do. We got Becky in Kansas gave $75. Nancy from Ashmore, she's a longtime Ashmore resident. And James from Oakland, he's a regular visitor at Walnut Point and really enjoyed hearing their story. And then my forever friend, Jaina Johnson. Jaina, thank you for calling in and for your support <laughs> tonight. And then Ron Woodyard from Ashmore. Thank you so much, Ron, for your gift tonight. And we've got Trish from Kansas. She got one DVD or Blu-ray. Hmm. Uh, she remembers the church fire vividly. I mean, wow. that had to be <laughs> talk of the town, my goodness. We've got Susan from Kansas. That's John Saxton, Saxton's wife. Aww. John couldn't be here tonight. We're missing you, but we hope yes, that uh, these discs treat you well. We've got Camille we from you, John. <laughs> yes, we've got Camille <laughs> from Kansas, which is Brett's sister showing out she got four discs Woo! Yes. so feel free to try and call in to beat her we've got Larry M from Hinesboro got a disc Mary W from Sarah Gordo got a disc she said I know Cindy and Brett and grew up in Kansas see all these people they they go I off and it. they come back and they just want to love on their hometown Lori sure did that she's out of Mechanicsburg Pennsylvania she was the first caller bragging rights there that's Brian Watson's sister oh, so his story's coming yes. up in the next segment so just keep 
sitting tight. Lori, we'll get there. Right. And then we've got JC from Kansas. He really enjoyed the Kansas story. Very well done. Thank you so much. And thank you for, for being with us tonight. And we're a little quiet right now. I know. So, so call that number at the bottom of really your screen. We need you to pick up the phone and call us. We want to keep these phone operators busy tonight. We've changed them around just a little bit, added a few new ones. And so give you an opportunity to talk to someone different. So our storytellers are just so sweet coming here tonight to cheer on for their sweet towns so you can hear their stories and so you can share in their excitement. And the way you share in their excitement is by calling in the number on your screen, getting a DVD or a Blu-ray or getting both and getting several and try to beat the one that got four. Like, how cool is that? I was going to say, I had to ask the phone operators, now how much is that? This <laughs> math is not my strong suit. But uh, earlier I was talking about having um, some folks here that I knew growing up, and I know one of them is behind me. We've got Dakota Kirshner, you just saw his story, Five Generations and Counting. We're so glad to have you tonight. I'm glad to be here. Of course. And so, as you were doing this process, did any of it make you nervous? What was fun about it? Um, it, I wasn't really too nervous, to be honest with you, but Good. it was, I personally didn't know the full story of our business, so it was cool to talk to my grandpa and kind of dig into that a little farther, because there's a lot of stuff that I didn't know, and I thought it was really interesting to learn about. Yes, I really love uh, when you were talking about heating up the bricks, as the gentlemen are doing a horse and buggy, was there any other interesting kind of quirky things like that, or? Uh, nothing that he uh, he mentioned too much. I mean, everything back then was done by hand. Yeah. Where now it's all mechanical. You got forklifts, you got semis, uh, big trucks. There's, it's all just different now. A lot quicker for yes. sure. Yes, a lot more efficient. And I know that you were kind of featured in uh, TJ's story as well for the Tri-County Titan stuff. Does that bring back some memories? Oh, some man. of this Oaks and yes. Titan skiers? Yes, those were the days. What was your favorite sports memory? Do you have one you could share? Um, there was actually a picture uh, at the very beginning of, it was me, TJ, Skyler, and I don't remember who the other was. We were all holding hands. Michael. It might have been Michael. And we were we were all holding hands going on the 50-yard line to for the coin flip at the beginning of the game. And that's, that's just something that's an awesome experience. Fantastic. Well, we're so glad to have you tonight. You. If you guys want to give a shout out or talk to Dakota, give him a call. That number's at the bottom of your screen. And I think we've got another uh, interview in store on our other set. Want to okay? Yes, we do. We are joined right now by one of our storytellers, our sweet Wanda Rule. She is 98 years young, and I'm telling you, she is a trooper. She's right here all the way, and she's excited tonight. Wanda, can you tell us what this experience was like for you to be part of this story? It has been a very great experience, one of the best in my life. And you can't tell me we can't keep having new experiences and new things going no matter what your age is. But I really enjoyed it and I thought everything has gone so well and uh, all of you have been so gracious in uh, helping us relax to do our part. <laughs> oh, that is so sweet. And so tell me what coming here to the TV station was like for tonight. This has been quite different as we see so many of you working in order to bring this to pass. And it, it, it is, it, it's, it's hard for us to realize that it takes so many different parts to put the whole program together. It really does. WEIU is one big family and we just love having you as part of our family. And that's kind of what this is like tonight. It is, it is. And uh, with the uh, uh, meeting last Thursday night for the red carpet, it was lovely. Oh. It really was. It was just, uh, well, beyond our imagination almost of what it, everything went so well. And it was such a congenial atmosphere. Everybody was comfortable and socially uh, adapted, I think, to each other. That's so sweet. Oh my goodness. Don't you just love her? I'm telling you, 98 years young, sharp as can be, and right here with us tonight. So call in and support this station, support this program, just because of little Wanda Rule, 98 years young. If she can come out and be a part of something like this, then you can pick up the phone and call in and support. Back to Lacey. Thank you, Wanda Kay. And other, is it Wanda Squared? Is that what we're going with? Double the Wanda? 
we'll, we'll work on that. But again, thank you all so much for calling in. It means a lot. Like we've been saying, WEIU, it's a big family. It's a great educational opportunity. I know I went to Oakland High School, but I came here for college. I got the on-air experience that I had been craving. I didn't even realize that WEIU was in my own backyard. Our news director here, she calls it the hidden gem. And we don't want it to be hidden. Tonight, we want you to share this. If you're watching on Facebook or YouTube, be sure to share the link with your friends. Like Juana K said, give them a call, shoot them a text. Let them know that they're missing out on an incredible story. Look at that house. The Rutherford House over in Oakland, Lacey and I went and was able to tour the house and, and oh my goodness, such treasures. And then Kathy was so sweet. She said, you know what? I think I have a, a doll house out in the barn. Why don't we go out there? And I thought that barn door was gonna fall off the hinges trying to get in there. <laughs> we open it up and there is this beautiful doll house. That's a replica of the Rutherford home there in Oakland. So if you ever get a chance in the area to go by and visit that, another treasure. It's so cool. And you'll see Kathy's story in our final segment. She is the best tour guide. <laughs> Let me tell you what, if you head up to the Rutherford home, she and um, Landmarks Inc., there it is. She will give you one of the best tours. She's so animated. You're going to love her story. And so thank you for keeping these phones busy. We love that. This I think it's so just Miss Jackie. If you want to fill up the phones, give a call now. Numbers at the bottom of your screen. That's right. Call in and show your support tonight. What a great program. I just love this program because it just has such heart. You just feel the love that these precious people have for their little small towns. And like I say, small towns, but big hearts. And we feel that tonight. And I know you feel it because the phones are busy. And thank you for that. Thank you because it's supporting WEIU to continue doing what we love to do, which is reach out into the community, train students here at, at uh, EIU and, and be able to train them for a future career. Uh, say here I am. Exactly, right <laughs> here is a product <laughs> of what we do. Miss Lacey Spence, mm -hmm. I'm telling you. So please pick up the phone and call and become a member with us. Your membership is so important to WEIU. That's how we continue going out into the communities. That's how we continue doing everything we do every day. And we love it. We yes. love doing this. My goodness, Lacey and I, I don't know how many times we've said how much we love getting up and coming to a job to get to do what we get to do, which is tell your stories and, and just highlight your towns and meet the people oh that's the thing goodness. too there's a lot of folks here who i didn't know before the yeah. project and it's just so special to get to know them on that level where they're telling in some cases some of their most intimate stories their most oh, treasured yeah. stories yeah and it's it's great to be able to connect like that oh my goodness and i love them i love every one of them so much <laughs> and you know out, we were laughing a minute ago with our beautiful dakota you know <laughs> like what he's this single young amazing man and but now we're all protective of him because like he's our family and so like you got to go through me and Lacey the big sisters here uh to get to Dakota it's <laughs> just kidding I don't know maybe if you buy a DVD or Blu-ray you can get to him he really said that easy. was part of the requirement See, so if we'll you're... sell him for a Blu-ray or DVD no 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 you did not <laughs> just if you would kidding. like a DVD or Blu-ray right in call evening. in it's 75 Dakota would love to talk <laughs> he would to, love you. to talk to you yeah 75 for one disc and it's $60 for two or more. And this year we are yeah. adding Blu-rays in addition to DVDs. So if you're not sure which format you prefer, if you're like, I've always got a DVD, that's fine. Stick with the DVD, no worries. But we do offer a Blu-ray now, slightly I crisper, know. but it's no extra charge for it to be a Blu-ray. So there, it's either 75 for one or 60 for two or more. So get one for your graduate, get one for your mom or your dad and make them feel really special. This is something they can watch for so many years to come mm -hmm. and be a treasure that they can pull out of the DVD, pull out the DVD or the Blu-ray 
stick it in and be able to watch it and just love all these stories and, and just love these beautiful towns that have shared their stories with you. So we're just having a blast yeah. here tonight. The phones are almost busy. Jamie's waiting on a phone call. Love that. So be that oh. next person that picks up the phone and calls the number on your screen. And please support this program tonight. Right now, we're getting close to yeah, going we back are. to some In our more next stories, segment, aren't we? We've got some great ones. If you yeah. ever went to Oakland High School, they did an event before they tore down the old high school. And it's, it's so a treasure. Cool. Janice Hunt, uh, she wow. runs the newspaper in Oakland. She did a phenomenal job. Again, yeah. one of those folks was a tad nervous to be on camera, oh, but yeah. again, she came in, she killed it. As I'm sitting there listening oh, to the yeah. unedited version, I'm hooked. I'm like, oh, I can remember those creaky floors. Like, <laughs> so nostalgic for that building. My class was the last one to graduate from it. So oh, it's goodness. one of my favorites. <laughs> wow. So right now you're gonna get to hear this story. We're going right back to Ashmore, Oakland, Kansas. This, this is, is our story. story. 